Radio Voces Latinas, 1610 AM. A drink of water with Joyce Aldrich. Refresh your mind. It's 4 degrees at 8 o'clock here at CHHA, 1610 AM, and you're listening to A Drink of Water. And uh, this week's edition is uh, a special edition because we're going to be commemorating what is called Yom HaShoah, which is the Holocaust uh, Remembrance Day, which actually starts tomorrow evening, uh, the Wednesday, the 11th. And uh, in studio tonight, I have Renana Jeminer. And uh, she says, you know, she's really an ordinary voice, but you know what? Her voice harkens back to those mothers who were forced to bid their children uh, goodbye in the camps where families were separated, never to see each other again. And it was absolutely heartbreaking for families. And uh, we're going to hear more about that from Renan and about Yom HaShoah. But here is a special, a special recording of Hatikva at Bergen-Belsen. A remarkable recording was made in the German concentration camp of Bergen-Belsen. The recording became part of a radio report on the liberation of that death camp that was filed by Patrick Gordon Walker, who worked for the BBC. This is London calling... The day I reached Belsen concentration camp, the fifth day of liberation, was a Friday, the day before the Jewish Sabbath. Something like half the surviving prisoners at Belsen were Jews, and the Jewish chaplain to the British Second Army, the Reverend L. H. Hartman, held an eve of the Sabbath service in the open air in the midst of the camp. It was the first Jewish service that many of the men and women present had taken part in for six years. It was probably the first Jewish service held on German soil in absolute security and without fear for a decade. Around us lay the corpses that there had not been time to clear away, even after five days. Forty thousand or more had been cleared, but there were still one or two thousand around. And people were still lying down and dying in broad daylight in front of our eyes. This was the background to this open-air Jewish service. During the service, the few hundred people gathered together were sobbing openly with joy at their liberation, and with sorrow at the memory of their parents and brothers and sisters that had been taken from them and gassed and burned. These people knew they were being recorded. They wanted the world to hear their voice. They made a tremendous effort, which quite exhausted them. Listen. <laughs> The children of Israel still live it. Survivors of Bergen Belson singing Hatikva at Shabbat services on April 20th, 1945, following their liberation by British troops of the Second Army. That transcription of a shortwave broadcast was made in New York City by Mo Ash. The recently discovered recording comes to us from the Smithsonian Center for American Folklife. And for you who are just tuning in, you're listening to 
C H H A sixteen ten AM a drink of water. My name is Joyce Aldrich and in studio, as I mentioned before, I have Renana Jeminer. Welcome Renana to a drink of water. Thank you very it, much. It's so wonderful for you to come in because I know this was rather difficult for you because you said your voice is an ordinary voice, but you you heard the voices of those people who have just been liberated, liberated, you know. They're in the camps. There are people who are dying around them. There are thousands still who haven't, you know, they're, 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 they're exposed, dead bodies everywhere. And, and yet they wanted, they knew they were being, broadcast yet they wanted to have their voices heard and they they strained and and they came out with the beautiful anthem of Israel Hatikva how did you feel when you were listening to that well thank you Joyce mm -hmm. for asking that um when I I said I was an ordinary voice I, I mean that what I'm saying and seeing is it's just the very simple obvious truth mm-hmm and my opinions are, are are just that simple, obvious truth that a simple person can see. And um, hearing these voices, it um, it is horrifying to think of the suffering and the dying that. Um, was uh, perpetrated. Uh, absolutely. And, you know, whether people are Jewish or Gentile or wherever people are from, everybody has heard about the Shoah, the Holocaust. You'd have to be um, completely unaware not to have noticed that, you know, this did happen. Yet, there are still people who deny that it did happen. And and uh, we'll hear an excerpt uh, in after the next break uh, from the diary of Anne Frank. And even people have denied that that ever happened and everything. So, and and this has gone throughout Jewish history. There, there's there been all of this dissension and denial. And you are here as well to speak to not just what happened during the Holocaust, which was horrific, but also what continues to happen here on the planet and to the world. And really what I want to I want to hear from you this evening is what you have to say to the world and what you have to say to Jews. Um, well, I'll, I'll just start with one thing. Mm -hmm. One of the things that is so um, horrifying for me listening to these survivors singing is that I don't think that the real cause of the Holocaust has been acknowledged, and I think it continues to this day. Can you, is that, that's part of the truth that you want to share mm -hmm. with us this evening. Would you like to start doing that, please? Because I think that's... Well, certainly um, the Nazis were, of course, a major part, the countries and the people who collaborated with them, the world, with a few exceptions, who supported or did nothing and in that way supported. But I would suggest that the Holocaust could not have happened without the key players who were the Arabs. And I will explain that. And that's what very interesting, yeah. If, if you like. Yes, you like me to ab explain? absolutely. Yes, that's what you're here to do, to speak well, the truth that you want, want to impart. Without the Arabs, the Holocaust would not have happened. They are the most responsible party of all. And I will give just a few um, introductory comments to support that. Mm -hmm. As early as 1941, the Nazis wanted to get rid of the Jews. Mm -hmm. And Eichmann was prepared to send them out. But there was one problem. They could not go anywhere from where from to any location from which they could even dream of getting to Palestine because of the deal that the Germans had made with the Mufti. Now, that was the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem. Is that, was, that the per person you're talking the, about? Uh, mm -hmm. Who was the Arab national leader. Okay. And what's interesting is that the Jews already had received acknowledgement under 
the law of man under international law that that tiny sliver of land belonged to them. They already had sovereignty from the early 1920s at the same time when the Arabs received sovereignty in over 96 percent of the Middle East. So this is well before 1948 then. So Absolutely. people like people like to use that as a defining point for the land of Israel, but you're saying that the sovereignty rights were, before were, that. were given by God mm -hmm. Thousand a long time ago, but and but but by the world, we, we talked about international law, international the early law, 1920s, yeah. unanimously approved by the League of Nations and um, inherited by the United Nations, specifically spelled out in Article 80 of the United Nations. So the Jewish people had full rights under international law, and the British Mandate was responsible. You can read it for bringing the Jewish people to join their brethren who had always been in Israel. And they did not do that, and also because they were seeking to appease the Arabs. So, now may I ask you where people can read the British Mandate? Is That is online? Absolutely, mm -hmm. you can read it. Where anywhere. can they find that? I, I, mean, I have many copies, but I think you can just go online and read the British Mandate. You okay. will read... Uh, that the British were responsible for helping Jewish people come to Israel and also yes. for not ceding any land to foreign powers. All the land was for the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. And it, it's um, and the land at that point, uh, where where were the defining borders? Do you, are you in, in the early 1920s, the final boundary, um, the boundary treaty was the Franco-British Convention, and that laid the boundary at the Jordan River. Originally, the mandate included land, the Palestine mandate, because you see, Palestine was the ancient Roman name for Israel. Yes, so that's right. Yeah. The Palestine mandate included um, land on the east side of the Jordan, but the British um, probably illegally took that away. So what was from the Jordan River west to the Mediterranean, that was left at least for the Jewish people, and as I say, the Arabs received over 96% of the Middle East. Yes, because I know the British, they car they basically carved up the Middle East into different countries, which were not, it, it really hasn't served the Arab people as well. Uh, so th there was a real mess back then by, by I guess, the West determining that what, what tribal nations needed, and, it, and, and, and the Jewish nation is a tribal nation. Well, I I, I well. don't see it that way. No, uh, well, you know, you know, yeah. I, I'm just thinking of. Well, we're the only de it's the only democracy in the Middle East. No, but I mean, what I don't see is um, I I uh, in terms of Israel and the Arab problem, there is no blame um, anywhere. It has nothing nothing to do with how the other countries were divided. It has to do with the fact that the Arabs colluded with the British in mm -hmm. blocking six million Jews and allowing in a massive illegal Arab immigration into tiny Palestine, even though they'd already received sovereignty in 96% of the land. And This is back in the 20s. Yeah, yeah, from the time of the mandate. Mm -hmm. And the Arabs were flooding in before, but certainly it was illegal. I can give you just one quote, the uh, Syrian... Yes. Syrian governor uh, quoted that in 1933 alone, in a period of three to four months, somewhere between 30 and 36,000 Arabs came in from Syria alone, mm. and they came in illegally from over 22 countries. Fortunately for them, they're dealing with Jews, so probably no one will throw them out, but certainly you would expect that they would be grateful. They are free to go back to the 22 countries from which they came, but they should be grateful to live in Israel and not create this jihadist lie. Well, we're going to, on that note, and for people to think about this over the break, we're going to go to break, and we'll be back with more of Renana Jeminer, who is um, a person who I, I find your force, <laughs> and, and a wonderful force. And um, we're going to talk with you after break, and we're going to also hear a clip from the Diary of Anne Frank in commemoration of the Holocaust Remembrance Day. We'll be back right after this. You are listening to Radio Voces Latinas, 1610 AM. A drink of water. The era 
raids are getting worse. They come over day and night. The noise is terrifying. Pim says it should be music to our ears. The more planes, the sooner will come the end of the war. Mrs. Van Damme pretends to be a fatalist. What will be, will be. But when the planes come over, who is the most frightened? No one else but Petronella. Monday, the 9th of November, 1942. Wonderful news. Allies have landed in Africa. Pim says we can look for an early finish to the war. Just for fun, he asked each of us what was the first thing we wanted to do when we got out of here. Mrs. Van Dan longs to be home with her own things. Her needlepoint chairs, the Beckstein piano her father gave her, the best money could buy. Peter would like to go to a movie. Mr. Duffel wants to go back to his dentist's thrill. He's afraid he's losing his touch. For myself, there are so many things. To ride a bike again, to laugh till my belly aches, to have new clothes from the skin out, to have a hot tub filled to overflowing and wallow in it for hours, to be back in school with my friends. And that, uh, if you're just tuning in, was an excerpt from the Diary of Anne Frank. You're listening to A Drink of Water. I'm Joyce Aldrich. And I'm in studio with Renana Jeminer. And Renana, you are, um, well, you graduated from the University of Toronto College of Art, OCAD, and uh, Art Therapy Institute of Toronto. And um, you're also the co-founder of Mothers of Kidnapped Israeli Soldiers and the co-founder of Canadian Jews and Friends for Yazidis. So, and you're also contributing um, writer to several publications. And uh, I've read some of your work, and it's, it's really wonderful. You really are... Um, uh, a very deep thinker and a wonderful researcher. So I do really regard what you have to say here as um, really, really beneficial. You want to share something with us? Well, I thank you very much. And um, I would like to just um, bring forth a couple things to support these two important points that do not get uh, much attention. Number one, the Arab role and responsibility in the Holocaust and the massive illegal Arab immigration. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll go back to the leading um, Matt Nazi, uh, Dieter Wislissany, who was uh, hung at Nuremberg, and it was he who uh, described to one of the Jewish leaders that uh, there was this deal with the Mufti as early as 1941. But I would like to add two more um, brief uh, notes that uh, later on in the war when there was an attempt by another leading uh, uh, Jewish rescue effort to bring a thousand children mm -hmm. out uh, Dieter Wislissany explained that they could not go to Palestine because of the Mufti who he said quote was a close associate of Himmler and one of the creators of the final solution. My. And in the Nuremberg trials, Wislissany, Dieter Wislissany, one of the leading Nazis wh who was hung, was quoted as stating, mm -hmm. in my opinion, the Grand Mufti, who had been in Berlin since 1941, played a role in the decision of the German government to exterminate the European Jews the importance of which must not be disregarded. He has repeatedly suggested to the various authorities with whom he has been in contact, above all before Hitler, Rubentrop, and Himmler, the extermination of European Jewry. He considered this a comfortable solution for the Palestine problem. In his messages broadcast from Berlin, he surpassed us in anti-Jewish attacks. He was one of Eichmann's best friends and has constantly incited him to accelerate the extermination measures. And I would suggest that the Arabs uh, sacrificing their own people in Gaza and just foaming at the mouth to devour the Jewish people are the direct descendants motivated by exactly the same jihadist, murderous um, push that they were during the Holocaust. Well, this past weekend was pretty bad with the, the burning tires on the border. And, and um, 
they're they're and, also yeah and and flying flying i think there was a fly with there was a swastika on it swastika on it well they are very proud they are the spiritual and intellectual um descendants of the mufti and and very proud of it mm-hmm. and their whole position is a lie mm-hmm. as i said they are not the indigenous people of israel or palestine palestine was the name given by the romans for the jewish state you can look in the french la russe dictionary as late as 1939 and see the flags of the world and you'll see the flag of palestine it's a huge jewish star of david yeah that's right mm. well you know a lot of people find like i i'm hearing this and i i, I know this and but for our listeners for a lot of people this is new well, this is news because it's not, absolutely. it's really not heard a lot. It's not the popular narrative that's, 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 um, that's given. And it's, it's a hard narrative to deliver, uh, because it, it may not fall on, on ears in, it, it, it's, it doesn't tickle the ear, you know, it's something that people don't really want to hear. But at the same time, we need to understand what history um, what the the history is, you know, and to find that the, the the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem had the ear of Hitler. Well, more than that. More than that. More than that. He was there. He was he was there to design the 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 final solution. I know. I I do. I had read that he had recommended the the ovens and the and the gas. The, the, the you know the the way to the way to eliminate. The Jews well, and also and, and and yeah and to to block their their entry into sorry, Palestine and at the same time in in Palestine he was and the Arab leadership with British support was uh, creating massive uh, incitement and violence exactly what they're doing now there was this massive illegal Arab immigration there were some Arabs there but there was a massive illegal Arab immigration and then they did exactly what they're doing now they claimed that they were the indigenous people and they did their violence and the british betrayed the jewish people especially as the war was coming up and they wanted to appease the arabs right. who are the who are already uh, closely connected with the germans and i can read you a, a few uh references by winston churchill and mm-hmm. roosevelt to this Illegal Arab immigration. Yeah, I was just going to say, this it, during that time, the world was not exactly pro-Jewish, as we no. know. A lot of J- Jews were turned away from country uh, from Canada, from mm-hmm. all the countries. People, shiploads of people, turned back to end their lives in right. concentration camps, and it seems that that the world. Again, and I say again, it has never really stopped, but there are surges. You know, there's, ri- uh, there's a rise in anti-Semitism. Or, and it's, it's, it's here again. The world is, like, not happy with Jews right now. It, doesn't, it, seems, it seems to be a kind of, well, you know, it, it's not a comfortable, um, it's kind of not comfortable right now. Well, at the time that uh, Jewish people were trying to, when they could still get out of, Nazi-controlled lands, and we're trying to find a safe place to land. Mm-hmm. The countries who were saying no were, in large part, countries who, as part of the League of Nations, had voted to support the Palestine Mandate. Remember, there were fourteen Unreal. mandates, and it was at the same time that international sovereignty was recognized in Palestine for the Jewish people that the Arabs were recognized as sovereign in 96% of the Middle East. So oh, yeah. the Arabs did two things. They rioted and lied and infiltrated into Palestine and worked with the British to blackmail the British to block the Jewish people and to betray the international treaty, which commanded them to facilitate the return of the Jewish people to their land and to prevent their land from being given to any foreign powers. The Arabs did this at the same time that they worked with the Nazis to not only plan and and carry out the Holocaust, but to prevent the Germans from allowing the Jewish people to even go to Palestine, where they had uh, sovereign rights under international law since the early 1920s. Yeah, so total disregard 
of of any kind of of, of treaties, any anything that was laid down by by the UN. Well, actually, by by the, the League, League of Nations, Nations at that time. And absolutely, then later, you're right about the UN because Article 80 of the UN confirms that the UN inherited all the international treaties and mandates, including mandates from the League of Nations. And they also betrayed the Jewish people and waited uh, very comfortably for the Arabs to massacre us in the tiny piece of land that they did not take away in the so-called partition plan, which was illegal. We already mm -hmm. had sovereignty in the land. And um, I will say it's the same thing that is happening for the Yazidi people now who have in an Iraq, ancient yeah. land and it has been invaded by massacring Islamic forces, mm -hmm. not only ISIS, but support of Kurdish forces. And, and Turkish forces are now going yeah, in. Mm -hmm. Muslim villagers who, who joined the so-called ISIS to massacre, rape, and throw Yazidis into ovens. This is their land. And now it they did. Been, they did the exact same thing right. they did to Jews. Being allowed to be taken over and all international treaties and truth is being buried um, by the world. Well, again, we're going to go to break and uh, leave uh, people with that thought. We're going to come back with uh, more of um, commemorating, remembering the uh, Holocaust, the Shoah. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> You are listening to Radio Voces Latinas, 1610 AM. A drink of water. It's 829 here at CHHA, 1610 AM. I'm Joyce Aldrich, and you're listening to A Drink of Water. And in studio we have Renana Jeminer. Before we get back to Renana Jeminer, who has a lot to share with us regarding um, the Holocaust, I want to share with you a story about Rabbi Yosser Kahaneman um, Zatzel, who once was encountered by a church denial of Jewish children in their place. There were a lot of children who had been scattered. Um, he began calling out the Shema, Israel, and instinctively children raised their hands to cover their eyes and started calling out, Mama, Mama, because these children had been, well, torn from their, their mother's arms. And uh, many, many children did go into hiding, but they went into... Um, non-Jewish homes, which, of course, they were protected there, or they went in, you know, other people took care of them. But after the war, um, there was an effort to retrieve them and to bring them back. So this is a, a story. This is called Memory of the Shoah Shema, and this is by Yaakov uh, Shwoki, and um, it's a beautiful, beautiful story. Saw the pain in mother's eyes Who left her little precious for your fall In a citadel of ash and stone Preached a faith unlike his own Perhaps he just may yet survive this war In the shadows stood a man in black my child, he said, you must not look back Yet one image lingered, the tears on her face And mother's words from their last embrace Shema, Shema Yisroel Deep within the iron gate, far from the stench of war and hate, he knew that of a world gone insane. You must believe us, he was told, our faith 
faith alone can save your soul Please let us heal your wounds and ease your pain Each right now to forget his past is home But he was so very young and all alone One vision's of a shadow what's vivid and clear Begin to fade and all but disappear Shema, Shema Yisroel Know that there is but one God above When you feel pain, when you rejoice No one longs to hear your voice Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echol. The winds of war had finally passed. One man took on the sacred task. To bring the scattered Jewish children home They traveled far from place to place A quest to reignite the faith Of those sent into hiding long ago He entered the fortress gray and cold Your kind is not among us he was told Hashem above He whispered Please don't let me fail As he began to sing Shema Yisroel Shema Shema Yisroel Know that there is But what God above the Shoah, and Yaakov Shwoki, and we're here in studio with uh, Renana Goldhar. How wonderful to have you here, Renana, and you have um, more to share with us. Let's continue with uh, your, the truth you're trying to well, impart to us. Um, I would, would like to say that uh, the um, gas that came out of the gas chambers Mm-hmm. Uh, for to to asphyxiate the Jewish 
men, women, and children, which the world knew completely about mm. and allowed to happen is exactly what is happening now. The lie and the terrorism that the Arabs at the border in Gaza seek to spew out this occupation lie is just like the gas and the collusion by the media and world powers turning their back on what is the obvious truth and pretending or even accepting mm. this jihadist lie is the same collusion that they did with the gas coming out of the ovens and it is having a lethal effect on our people because as in the Holocaust the power of the supporters to the Arab jihadists is so great that even Jewish people don't know what is the truth and even fair-minded non-Jewish people hardly hear the truth that this occupation lie is nothing but a jihadist tool. Um, May I just, I was going to bring up Mark Vandermas's name, who's a non-Jew, uh, and he has his, um, he has Israel Truth, I think that's what it is, Israel, Israel Truth, Truth Week, Week. Uh -huh. yeah, online, so I know he's, he's doing an awful lot of uh, advocacy yes, uh, he is. for that, for, for Israel, not just for Israel, but for Jewish people, but uh, I understand what, what it is, is being anti-Israel is the new anti-Semitism. Well, when I, when I hear, um, I, I would like to read uh, uh, a quote from uh, the Christian uh, chairman of the American Christian Palestine okay. Committee uh, from 1953. And there were many, many wonderful Christian Zionists, and there are today many, many. And uh, I, I think of Ord Wingate, who was uh, a leading uh, person in the British Army who helped to train the early people in the Haganah and I remember reading that one night he was helping the Jewish people mm -hmm. learn how to go out at night because the Arabs were attacking us everywhere and no one knew that he had learned Hebrew and huh. out of the dark came this voice saying to the Jewish young men, many who were thin scared survivors, not scared, but damaged survivors Depleted, from the Holocaust. Yeah. And he said to them, he said, you are the sons of Maccabees. You can do this. And mm. the British took Ordwin Gate away, and uh, he died tragically uh, somewhere, I believe, in Africa. And during the war of 1948, his wife had his Bible parachuted down to the... Um, the Jewish fighters with the message that uh, Ord would have wanted you to have this. So um, I, I, I will tell you that in 1953, mm -hmm. Dr. Carl Herman Voss, who was chairman of the American Christian Palestine Committee, stated, quote, the Arab population of Palestine. Remember, Palestine was the Roman name for the Jewish state. Yeah, Why it's Palestine? It's a, yeah, it's an old name. It was when the Romans finally overcame the Jews who fought so hard for their homeland, the Romans decided not only will we massacre and exile them, but we will rename their the country after their enemies who were the Philistines. That's right, the Philistines. A right. people who have absolutely no connection to the Arabs. So Palestine was a name that stuck. My mother and father donated the first heart to the Palestine Symphony, the Palestine newspaper, the Palestine Bank, the Palestine Dances. These were all Jewish organizations. So, Dr. And your husband was born in Palestine, yes, he's a and his sisters. He's a Palestinian. <laughs> yes, yes, we have yeah. uh, stamps from yeah. 1942. It says Palestina Eretz Yisrael. They were synonymous. There you go. So, Dr. Voss goes on to say, um, 
there were fewer, in 1880, there were fewer than 150 Arabs in all the land. The great majority of the Arab population in recent decades were comparative newcomers, either late immigrants or descendants of persons who had emigrated into Palestine in the previous 70 years. And we have, in 1930, the British commissioned Hopesinson report acknowledges the large-scale illegal Arab immigration to Palestine from the surrounding area and criticizes the British government for turning a blind eye to this problem. The British governor of Sinai reports in the Palestine Royal Commission, quote, this illegal immigration was not only going on from Sinai, but also from Transjordan and Syria. And as I referred before, the Tafik Bain Hurani, the Syrian governor in 1933, stated that between 30 to 36,000 Arabs came into Palestine just from Syria alone, and that alone could account for the population of Nablus, the biggest Arab city in Israel, which just over 100 years ago had almost no Arabs in it. And sh uh, shall I read from... Uh, uh, well, history is being... Re well, we don't have too much okay. time, but but the idea is there that it there's a lot of, of information, a lot of facts to support that uh, Israel is, 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 is a Jewish state. And, you know, it, it's... Well, how can I say it? It's it's just it's it's a travesty. People have they've turned to deaf ear, and it it seems to be easy to hate the Jew. And and Hitler, you know, he knew why he wanted to get rid of Jews because of the moral and ethics, the ethics of the fathers, as as is called. You know, the 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 way of life which has high moral standards and and the Torah, which of course was the yeast, the seed for both Christianity and Islam. So I mean, like, which is a large population of the world. So you know, he just wanted to get rid of all. all. And I'm surprised. It's just it's just very surprising in total. We're going to go to break again. And we'll come back uh, to just um, just finish off the uh, the discussion. And it's really great having you here, Renana. And um, um, yeah, this is very important. So we'll be back right after these messages. You are listening to Radio Voces Latinas, sixteen ten AM. A drink of water. We're here with Renana Jeminer here at CHHA 1610 AM. I'm Joyce Aldridge. You're listening to A Drink of Water. So, Renana, uh, moving right along. Yeah, you want to continue. Uh, and then we're going to play a little music at the end. So you got about, uh, oh, you got a few minutes. <laughs> you got several minutes. It's good. Thank you very much. So nice I, having you here. Thank you. I would like to um, close with a message to the Jewish youth and the Yazidi people. Mm. And before I do, I'd like to read two quotes yes. from uh, Roosevelt and Churchill, because people don't know about this massive illegal Arab immigration. Quote, the massive scale of the largely illegal Arab immigration and the British unwillingness to stem it was known to the whole world. In 1939, U.S. President Roosevelt observed this is from Time and Memorial, that since 1921, this Arab immigration, and now this is Roosevelt speaking, yes. this Arab immigration has vastly exceeded the total Jewish immigration during this whole period, unquote. Remember, mm. the mandate required the British to help bring the Jewish people into Palestine, Eretz Israel. There were always Jewish people there, despite being under the longest occupation in history, under horrendous conditions. We were always there. The British were required to help bring the rest of us back. But as Roosevelt said, the Arab immigration vastly exceeded the total Jewish. And in 1939, Winston Churchill noted that, quote, far from being persecuted, the Arabs have crowded into the country and multiplied until their population has increased more than even all of world Jewry could lift up the Jewish population. Unquote. Yeah, well, yeah, and the Jewish population is like 0 0.0006 well, percentage it was because of the, the, the... The British 
blocked the six million Jews in order to appease the Arabs, and the Arabs worked with the Nazis to plan and execute the Holocaust. So to recap, in the 20s, the League of Nations said, yeah, the, the Jews deserve their own homeland back because they are the indigenous people of that area. And then when Jews were not allowed to go there and were on ships and going to all these different countries which were part of the League of Nations and turned away, I'm thinking that probably these countries says, hey, you, you, you have your own country. Go back to your, you have a country. Maybe, I don't know what the thought was at that time. You know, we don't want you, go to your country. Maybe that's what they were thinking. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, uh, judge favorably here. There were but, a but the exceptions. But, yeah, there were, there were, of course, of course. In and Latin it, America, actually, and. Uh, well, Guatemala, I think they were, they, yeah, there were some people, there were some places that, uh, that were very, very open to accepting the Jews. Could I uh, yes. close with a message to the Yazidi? Absolutely. And the Jewish children. I, I'd like to say when, when you, when you talk, and that song talked about the little boy being torn away from his mother. Yes. I think none of this had to happen. No. Nope. And I think also of the Yazidi people, and one story that comes to mind is the Yazidi uh, boy who was stolen from his family and forced to be in ISIS, and one day in a group of slaves, he saw his own mother, and he said to her, uh, Mother, I, c I can't do anything. If I try to help you, they will kill us both. Mm -hmm. And so I think um, I was told they had a moment to embrace in privacy. I hope they did, and, uh, wow. and then they left. So I would like to leave a message to the over 3,000 Yazidi girls who are in slavery right now yes, and all the Yazidi people who think that because they are, maybe because they're not Muslim, that nobody cares about them. Certainly Canada is not making a priority of trying to help them. No, it, they, they have made promises, but they're not bringing them in and they've, they've closed down the private sponsorship, I understand. And I would like to leave a message for all the young Jewish kids out there who hear nothing but this occupation lie. Mm -hmm. You're not occupiers. It's a jihadist lie. And to the Yazidi people, you deserve to return in safety, in peace and freedom to your homeland. And you, Jewish children, you deserve to know that your people are ethical and that you have your own homeland and that this occupation lie is is nothing but a, a, a continuation of the final solution. And Zionism is not a dirty word. On the contrary. It just means On that the, the Jewish people want have their own oh, God-given God. land. That's the one. Oh, my goodness. Well, um, we're, we, we have a couple more <laughs> minutes. before I'm going to play a song that actually I wrote with uh, Chris Burkett. I'm going to do his version because uh, uh, it's called Don't Number Us, and um, I was inspired to write this because of the, we need to get the truth out, you know, like the pe we, we need to, we're here to love each other, you know, like that's one of the things, the tenets, you know, love your neighbor as yourself, and that means to love all people, and it's not always easy to do, but certainly it's something as we, we go into um, Yom HaShoah, into the Holocaust um, Remembrance Day that we we remember why we're here. You know, we're not just on the, we're not here for, you know, they say, some people say we're not here for a long time, we're here for a good time. No. <laughs> we're here for as long as we need to, to make the world a better place. And uh, I thank you very much, Renana, for joining me here tonight on a Drink of Water. So, um, and um I, w I look forward to other times having you on as well because uh, this is a never en well I want it to be a ne an, not a never ending story I want this to to have a happy ending and uh, and we have to do this as a people not just as a Jewish people but as people of the world okay so uh, I'm going to play Don't Dumber Us we'll go out with our extra and uh, we'll be and right after this we have the Punjabi show so uh, stay tuned for some uh, great music and uh, entertainment Don't number us don't call our name When you want someone else to bear the Times you cry at my 
much too long and round When trouble comes, no place to turn You look at us and your hearts burn Don't number us, don't call out me When you want someone else to blame You look at us and can't disguise Listening to CHHA 1610 AM Radio Voces Latinas, Canada's first ethnic and community radio station, owned and operated by San Lorenzo Latin American Community Center. Central studios are located at 22 Wenderley Drive in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Postal code is M6B2N9. Telephone number is 416-782-2953. 